welcome to Gadagamix. Before we begin, I'd like to inform you that some parts of this video were taken from comparison video with the Huawei Band 8 and from a Mi Band 8 unboxing video. If you are unsure about whether to choose the Mi Band 8 or the Huawei Band 8, you can simply watch the comparison video. The link is provided in the video description. As usual, at Gadagamix channel, you'll find several things that haven't been covered by other reviewers. Now, what's new in the Mi Band 8 compared to the Mi Band 7? The most noticeable change is its body. Now it uses quick release strap like this. It doesn't use the strap that wraps around the body like the previous Mi Band series, so you won't be able to use the Mi Band 7 strap on Mi Band 8. For the length and width, the Mi Band 8 is slightly larger. However, the Mi Band 8 is a bit thinner. Although, due to its body design, it actually appears a bit more thick. It is said that the body is made of metal, it's likely zinc alloy because it's lightweight and not magnetic. Mine is in glossy black color and there's also a version with a shiny silver body. I prefer the design of the Mi Band 8 over the Mi Band 7, it gives a more premium look. Here's how the Mi Band 8 looks when worn on my wrist with a canvas strap, not the default strap. Personally, I like it. It still feels like wearing a smart band, not a smart watch. In terms of comfort, it's similar to the previous Mi Band series. Quite comfortable to wear, though not suitable for individuals with very small wrists. For those with smaller wrists, we need to change the strap, for example, to one made of canvas like this. And as I've always mentioned in my previous Mi Band videos, be careful with the standard strap of the Mi Band, it can come off if it gets caught. The Mi Band 8 has a necklace mode, so you can use it as a pendant. This is suitable for people who don't like wearing watches, but still need to check the time and track their step count. In necklace mode, the screen will be locked to prevent accidental touches. The screen remains lit for 3 minutes and after that, it will display a simpler always on display. Both have same size and screen resolution. The difference is that the screen brightness of the Mi Band 8 is slightly higher at 600 nits compared to 500 nits in the Mi Band 7. Additionally, the Mi Band 8 has an auto brightness feature, but you can also adjust it manually if desired. The Mi Band 8 now has a 60Hz screen refresh rate compared to the 30Hz of the Mi Band 7. This difference is noticeable, navigating through menus on the Mi Band 8 feels more responsive and smoother. Another difference is that the Mi Band 8 can not only be used on the wrist but can also be placed in your shoe to analyze running movements more accurately. We will also test this feature in this video. The design of the sensors on the Mi Band 8 also looks different. While the Mi Band 7 had two LED lights and one sensor, the Mi Band 8 combines the red and green LEDs beside the sensor. With this design change, I hope that the sensor accuracy will be improved. Some of the watch faces on Mi Band 8 can be used as mini games. There are also mini games for Mi Band 7 actually, but the installation process was a bit cumbersome, not as easy as Mi Band 8. In the Mi Band 8, you can easily install these games through the watch face page in the Mi Fitness app. However, the number of games available is not many, about 5 games at this time. The first drawback for me is that until now, the selection of watch faces for the Mi Band 8 is quite limited compared to let's say the Huawei Band 8. There are fewer than 300 options for Mi Band 8 and unfortunately, very few watch faces that I personally like. And for some reason, until now, the options for custom watch faces are very limited, not even 5. I remember that around August last year, there were many Mi Band 7 custom watch faces already available. Moreover, the always on display or AOD screen is too dim in my opinion. By the way, for the always on display feature, the style usually follows the watch face appearance. So if it's an analog watch face, it will be displayed in analog style and vice versa. However, there are also watch faces that have same AOD appearance like these watch faces. So the first drawback is the Mi Band 8 watch faces selection is not much if compared to the Huawei Band 8 and Mi Band 7 and also the dim AOD display. Anyway, for some of the Mi Band 8 watch faces, they are modular type so you can choose what data you want to display. The Mi Band 8 has a keep screen on feature that allows the main screen to stay lit continuously for 20 minutes and can be repeated. However, accessing the settings for this feature is not very practical. If you like using photo watch faces, the Mi Band 8 can use 8 different photos. To change the photo, you can do so by tapping the screen. And also, every time the screen goes off and on again, the photo will change. Even though the Mi Band 8 screen is elongated upwards, but I think it still looks good when using photo watch faces, especially if the photos are in portrait mode. Unfortunately, since my Mi Band 8 is the Chinese version, the days of the week on the photo watch faces are still written in Mandarin. I'll have to wait for global firmware update to fix it. But for other watch faces, many of them already have the days of the week in English. 
The settings for which apps can send notifications are managed through the Mi Fitness app on your phone. The Mi Band 8 doesn't have a speaker, so it uses vibrations that you can feel on your wrist. The second drawback of the Mi Band 8 is the absence of quick reply feature, at least as of the time I made this video. I hope there will be a quick reply feature in the future when the global firmware is available, but I'm not sure when or will it be. For notification, the Mi Band 8 can display up to 395 characters including spaces. We can still read the text pretty easy but not the full message. The Mi Band 8 support notifications for WhatsApp call, it's only notifications, you cannot answer calls or use it for Bluetooth calling. Moving on to the sports feature, the Mi Band 8 doesn't have built-in GPS but it will automatically connect to your phone's GPS as long as it's connected. So if you are someone who always carries your phone during workouts, you'll be able to record outdoor exercise routes. We can still use it without connected to the phone but we won't be able to record workout routes and some data, for example, there won't be speed data for cycling if you are not carrying your phone. When you are running without bringing your phone, there will still be distance data. This is likely estimated based on your height, so make sure to input your height in the Mi Fitness app. The Mi Band 8 is 5 ATM water resistant, so it is safe to use for swimming. The recorded swimming data is quite comprehensive, including swim style, stroke count, swath index, and many more. Unfortunately, the Mi Band 8 doesn't record heart rate data for swimming. The Mi Band 8 has an auto pause feature, so if you are not moving, it will pause recording data and resume once you start moving again. This feature can also be turned off if desired. Another advantage of the Mi Band 8 is the pebble mode, which allows you to put the Mi Band 8 on your shoe to analyze running and cycling movements. There's actually a special casing or strap designed to be attached to the shoe, but since I don't have one, I replace the strap with the canvas strap and just wrap it around the shoe lace. We need to carry our smartphone when using pebble mode. Starting the workout needs to be initiated from the Mi Fitness app, as it cannot be done directly from the smart band. Before that, let's take a look at the data recorded for running when using the Mi Band 8 on the wrist or in normal mode. There's distance, time, pace, calories, steps, heart rate, cadence, and stride. Meanwhile, in pebble mode, there definitely won't be heart rate data since shoes don't have a heart. Additionally, there's time, calories, estimated from time and foot movement, pace, steps, and then the foot stride pattern. The foot strike pattern analyzes which part of your foot hits the ground first, whether it's the front, middle, or the back. There's also cadence and stride. Then there's the ground contact time, which measures how long your foot stays on the ground while running. The smaller the value, the better. For athletes, it's usually around 220 milliseconds or less. Flight time measures how long you are in the air while running. A good value is above 125 milliseconds. I have a high value here, not because I'm a good runner, but because during the test, I purposely jump a bit to increase the flight time. The flight ratio is the comparison between ground contact time and flight time. Professional athletes usually have a ratio below 2. My ratio is high because, as I mentioned earlier, my running was a bit random and involves some jumping-like movements. Impact force refers to how much force absorbed by the feet. Generally, a lower value indicates better results, meaning that the body position and movements are not putting excessive force on the feet. Then there's the cadence per pace ratio, and there's also the pronation and supination angle, which indicates how much the foot rotates inward or outward while running. Normally, it's between 5 to 25 degrees. Values above or below that range can increase the risk of injuries. I've compared it with different running styles, and it's true that when I walk or run slowly, the flight time is zero. Switching to cycling, when used on the wrist or in normal mode, you'll have a distance, times, calories, speed, heart rate, and training effect. Meanwhile, in pebble mode, there won't be heart rate data. Calories are just estimation based on time and foot movement. There's speed. And the difference in pebble mode is the cadence, indicating how many pedal strokes you have per minute. I'm not an athlete so I cannot confirm the accuracy of this data, however at the very least we can use them as the reference. Because of the pebble mode, I think Mi Band 8 is worth considering, especially for those who enjoy running. Not many smartphones or smartwatches have pebble mode feature, even in much more expensive one. The Mi Band 8 also has a training assistant for interval running. There are several options to choose as seen on the video. 
This is a feature that's often sought after by running enthusiasts. It provides us with time and instruction on when to switch our running mode. For step accuracy, the Mi Band 8 performs well compared to manual counting of 1000 steps. The Mi Band 8 can still control the music player on your phone while the sports feature is active. Since my Mi Band 8 is the Chinese version, some characters are not supported, like current characters may appear as boxes. Mi Band 8 cannot store music files directly on the band or connect it directly to Bluetooth headsets, it cannot. It's only for controlling the music player app on your phone via Bluetooth. For jump rope, the Mi Band 8 can count how many jumps you've made, making it suitable for boxers. The Mi Band 8 has auto workout detection, but I've never used it because it tends to drain the battery faster and is less accurate. We can view workout history on the phone after syncing and also check some of it directly on the band itself. There are about 150 sports modes you can select, however aside from sports like walking, running, swimming, jump rope, cycling, and tear variations, many other sports modes like dancing, yoga, martial arts, esports, and others only track calories and heart rate. So many of the sports modes are essentially the same with different names. Currently, the Mi Band 8 cannot sync with Strava. I cannot find the setting in the Mi Fitness app. Other health features include heart rate monitoring as well as blood oxygen or SpO2 and stress level measurements. I've compared the results with other devices and they give similar results or its function as they should. The health features can be activated throughout the day if needed and you can also set reminders in case there are any abnormal health data readings. The sleep monitoring feature of the Mi Band 8 works well. I've compared it with the Huawei Band 8 several times and the average sleep duration shown by both the Mi Band and Huawei Band 8 is quite similar. You can see that the sleep duration is only 2 minutes apart. As for the nap duration, it's exactly the same which is 56 minutes. The Mi Band 8 has a shutter or remote camera feature and it now has 3 and 5 second timers. One specific detail I like about the Mi Band 8 is that when you activate the do not disturb mode to silence notification and calls temporarily, your phone also goes into silent mode. The charging cable for the Mi Band 8 is different from the Mi Band 7. It still uses a magnetic charger but the cable is thicker. My Mi Band 8 can last for around 10 days with the settings shown on the screen. It's still quite sufficient for daily use. Here are the other features of the Mi Band 8 and let's discuss the pros and cons. The advantages of the Mi Band 8 for me are the premium looking design, a good quality display, a wide variety of strap options, and its glossy body color make it versatile matching with different strap colors. For sport features, although it doesn't have built-in GPS, it's so easy to connect to phone GPS and the pebble mode could be the main reason for people to buy the Mi Band 8. As for its drawbacks, the main issue lies with the firmware, as the global version is not yet available. This has led to the absence of certain features that were present in the Mi Band 7 but are not available in the Mi Band 8, such as there is no quick reply, inability to synchronize with Google Calendar, and a relatively limited number of watch faces compared to the Mi Band 7. For those who purchase the Chinese version of the Mi Band 8 and are having trouble pairing it with their phone, you need to set the region to China first in the Mi Fitness app. If you use region other than China, the band won't be able to pair or won't be detected. If you set your phone's language to English, the language on the Mi Band 8 will also be English. However, if you set your phone's language to other than English, the language on Mi Band 8 will change to Mandarin. Hopefully, if global firmware updates for the Mi Band 8 already available, it will support other regions and language, not just Mandarin. Even so, the features on the Mi Band 8 can still be used normally even if the region is set to China. In conclusion, I really like the hardware of the Mi Band 8, but in terms of software, it's not yet perfect due to the absence of the global firmware. I still recommend Mi Band 8 because of the several advantages I mentioned in the video. For your information, this video is not paid promotion. I bought Mi Band 8 myself and this is solely based on my personal opinion. Once again, if you need the comparison video with the Huawei Band 8, check the video description for the link. Thank you for visiting at Gergomix channel. I hope this video can be useful to someone and I'll see you in the next video.